What's up, YouTube, and welcome to Music Voodoo. Um, today we're gonna respond to uh, Ak Gram. I think that's his name. Uh, he commented three days ago. In his comment, he said, "You must know nothing about Sean to say he has ghostwriters." Shake my head. I appreciate the feedback, you know. And listen, I'm not trying to offend people by saying that Big Sean has ghostwriters. You know, everybody has ghostwriters nowadays. It's it's a normal thing. Um, I thought that everybody knew about that. And uh, but you know what, Akram's comment, you know, made me rethink of how I'm doing these videos and what direction I'm gonna go in, you know. And I like that. You know, what what this person made me think was that I need to do even more research on these artists and the topics that I'm discussing, you know. And I'm I'm not I don't claim to be a, an expert on these subjects, you know. I don't claim to be a, an expert on Big Sean or an expert on any other rappers or artists, you know. I I this the the angle that I'm trying to hit with these videos is the experience that I have with this music you know like I know as much as the average individual and because of these videos you know I'll do a little research and I'll find out but the comment made me think that I need to go even deeper into this you know I need to become a fanatic about these people every time I talk about them or any subject that I'm talking about and do a, even more research because you know I googled it but I didn't look it up on YouTube. You know, the video that, that Akram was talking about, he said that there's actually a documentary on Bebo uh, with Big Sh about Big Sean where he discusses uh, that he doesn't use a ghostwriter and he doesn't write and that uh, he, he freestyles, you know. And I didn't find anything about that. I looked, you know, but there's hundreds of videos out there. So, I mean, it would take me forever. And I was trying to, you know, do a little bit of research, but also trying to put this video together and just trying to put it out there. Because it's, it's still like the, the in the beginning stages of this whole experiment, this whole thing that I'm doing. But I did, I didn't find what he was, what he or she was talking about, what Akram was talking about the video. But I did find some stuff about ghostwriting in general, you know, and that it's been around for a long, long time, probably since the beginning of hip hop, probably even further in other genres as well, you know, not just here. And what I found out the most recent controversy about ghostwriting is with the Meek Mill and Drake beef. Meek Mill tweeted and said that Drake had ghostwriters, and that Drake claims to be a uh, lyrical genius, you know, and but it's all a lie because he uses ghostwriters, you know, that's what Meek Mill states. Then, you know, this created a, a battle between Meek Mill fans and Drake fans, and they both kind of went at it defending their, their favorite artists. And then other rappers started getting involved in this too, and talking about what they thought about this. And uh, one of the guys that Put his two cents in it was Tyrese and he said that he in an interview that he had on the breakfast club you can look up the video on YouTube he says that he didn't even write sweet lady and that these ghost writers are everywhere and they're working with everybody you know and your favorite rapper might be using it you might be using teams of ghost writers right and he said you know sweet lady I didn't write that at all. And it's not really shocking, you know, and it's at the end of the day, record labels are companies and they, you know, want to make money. You know, they got to see profits and these rappers, these artists are their investments and they do, they invest more money into this primary investment so that they can see some, some return on their money, you know, so they invest on other writers to go and write you know hits for these people and then they put it out there and you, nobody really knows and these people get paid well I mean they they obviously do it 
And it's not always about the money. You know, sometimes people that are good at writing aren't good at, you know, being the star. And some people that are good being the stars aren't good at writing, you know. And this brings up the question, where does the line of business and entertainment start? And does it really even matter at the end of the day, you know? Kevin Hart, you know, a lot of a lot of comedians are against Kevin Hart because they say he's got a team of joke writers, you know? And they write, he's got like 10, 15 people and they just write jokes, you know? They watch him do his stand-up and they go like, oh, this works. And they write, or hey, you know, maybe we can expand on that by doing this. Me personally, I don't care, you know? I'd rather, if I'm paying $200 for a ticket... I want to laugh my ass off, you know. I want to I want to be crying from the laughter, you know. I don't want to pay $200 and see some mediocre jokes, you know. Same with musicians, you know. Like if you you know these these people put up put out albums and they the fans are just waiting for this to be the the, the top the next the the top the the last album, you know. And they they can't really squeeze that much, you know, creativity from themselves. I mean, some of them can. Some are them. Some of them are naturally gifted. Others are just really bright business people. But you know, they're gonna do whatever to deliver, and they're gonna do this, and that's not a bad thing, you know, because the artist then he puts the emotion to the words. You know, a good example of that is Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar, I was watching this video on YouTube about him where he can manipulate his tones. He, they, they were interviewing him, and he said that he likes to manipulate the tone of his voice to express a different emotion, you know? And if you go and if you listen to his music, he does, he has like this weird alien voice, and then he's got this really deep, like, uh, devil voice, you know? He's got all kinds of of tones, you know, I think he's even got like a Jamaican accent in one of them, but, you know, that's what gives the the different emotion, you know, like it, it hits the, the listener in a different way, and that's what the artist brings to the table, you know, like it, he doesn't always, everything doesn't always have to rely on one person's shoulder, you know, like they can't, it would crush them, they, it would, it would kill them, you know, if year after year they had to create a whole new album, man, from the art of the cover to the last note, you know, like, they can't do that, that's, that's too much, that's too much, and that's why we shouldn't, you know, like, for me personally, I don't have a problem with ghostwriting, I think it just brings the best out of everybody, and it puts out uh, a really nice, a really tight song to the, to the world, you know, it sounds hippie as it is, but it's a, some that didn't exist, and it's being created and then released, you know. And this releasement of the these notes and this melody combined uh, gets an emotion out of you, out of listeners, you know. So it's it's not a bad thing. If so, back to let's take it back to Big Sean, okay? So when I said, you know, my last video when I was talking about the Ghost Riders, you know, like that's just something that I found, you know. I I look up songs, I look up, you know, naturally I always do, like, if, especially if it's a song that I like, an artist that I like, I look up the song and it'll tell me right there exactly who wrote it, you know, and it'll show you, like, right there. You know, like, the comment was saying, like, oh, Big Sean doesn't write it, doesn't use ghostwriters, you know, and there's no way for us to prove it, you know, these are deals that are done behind closed doors, it doesn't, it doesn't affect the way I view Big Sean whatsoever, man. He's a great guy. Like, if you ever watch his interviews, like, he's a really humble, great dude from New York, um, uh, from Detroit. And he, uh, you know, he's a really good guy, you know, and his music's tight. I like it. An artist is always going to protect their name, you know. They're never going to come out and be like, oh, yeah, I use a ghostwriter, you know. That's, that's not, that's not going to happen at all. He, Nobody's going to come out and admit it because they want that credit. That's what they're paying for. They're paying for the secrecy. So there's no way that anybody can prove it.